surely in this end mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Our New Testament scripture is taken from the gospel recorded by John, chapter 14, verses 1 through 7, reading from the New International Version. And listen, people, how it speaks to us. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. So how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really knew me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. May these words be a comfort not only to the family, but to all of us, because Jesus knows all about it. Gracious and merciful Savior, we come now looking to you. We know that you are our help. We come asking, Lord, in such a time as this that we're casting every care upon you. For we know that you care for us. Uh, oh God, you promised never to leave us, nor forsake us. Uh, we heard in the Gospel of Peter that we can cast all of our cares upon you. We heard in the Gospel of Psalm, oh God, that we can lift our eyes until the hills. For where cometh our help, we know that our help comes from the Lord, which made the heaven and the earth. Lord, we have come far and we have come near. Yes. We've come trusting in you. Lord, that's a prayer that I pray every morning. I thank you for opening the eyes of mine. But Lord, on today, I want to thank you for opening the every eye that's in the building today. Yes. Yes. I thank you, Lord, that we have breath in our body. Lord God, we have a right to lift our voices to you today. We ask in them, Lord, that you sustain us right where we are. Lord God, we are heavy hearted, but we come in prayer. We are wounded, but we believe in God that you are our strength like no other. We are trusting in the God of our mothers, our fathers. We are trusting in the God of Moses, Abraham, and Joshua. We are trusting in the God that have brought us this far. And Lord God, you say you'll never leave us, no, you forsake us. And we ask asking now, Lord, we are a community that need healing today. Yes. Not only in Andrews, God, but all over Georgetown, we need healing more than ever before. And we stand now, God, after you to heal us now. Remember my family, the Milton family, Lord, Lord God, strengthen them now like never before. We ask God that you would lift them in the area where that we go. We believe, Lord God, that you are our redeemer. You are our strength right now. We heard, Lord God, in Proverbs that told us, Lord, that we can trust in the Lord with all of our heart and lead not to our own understanding, but in all our ways acknowledge you, Lord, and you will. Direct our path, even though the 
Oh, come on, we give God praise for that song. I would do home. At uh, this particular time, we're going to go into our remarks. We're going to ask those that are doing the remarks, please try to get a lot of folks down and do the remarks. Please try to limit yourself at three minutes if, I, if at all possible. Now, if I stand, that means I'm going to come get you. <laughs> and I'm pretty big, so I think that's good. But no, y'all gonna be obedient. We thank God for you so much. And we want to say again to you, this family, our hearts and riches, we're praying for you, that God will bless you. One thing I want to promise you, he'll never leave you. No, he will never forsake you. In times like these, you'll find strength. You didn't know that you even have. Because the God on the inside of you will see you through even this. Just time for the moment, we have friends first. Uh, Gloria James, Hope Rue, D.D. Hopkins, uh, John Eric Dean, classmate, Nazar Wright, classmate of 2017, classmate of Martin Gibson, class of 1996, and family, Thomas Middleton. Y'all can use this mic on this platform right over to my right. And uh, let the Lord bless you with what you'd like to say at a time like this. This might be the last, this is the last opportunity for us to say something on behalf in this particular situation. Following our remarks, we'll have acknowledgement by Sister Tamara Grayson, and you'll be meeting our obituary in silence. In that order, if you would, God bless you. Just breathe, Hope. You got it. Breathe.
One thing about she always loved her kids. She went hard for her kids. She worked hard to provide for her kids. And you know Tasha's a, a fast and easy. If something will look good on you, she's going to tell you that it will look good. Um, but I'm going to miss her. Folks are going to miss her. The family's going to miss her. And from this day forward, cherish the, your loved ones every single day because we never know when it will be our last. Tasha, my girl, I love you. And if y'all got a friendship with somebody, I ain't kidding what it is. I ain't care how long y'all been talking, make that thing right. Because it's too late when they up here. When me and my girl had, we made it right years ago. But you can't come up to your casket saying this and this and this and that, make that right now. When y'all be here, make them friendships right. And her son, if y'all see him and he's smiling, make him smile. Take him somewhere, do something for him. Don't just wait till he's down. Just keep him going. Because he's going to need more than just his family. Because what he got right here. So he's going to need all of us. Good afternoon. Oh. Tasha, February 7th, 2022. Yesterday made eight months she was with us. And man, when I tell y'all, Tasha was a truck driver. I ain't never seen a female bag a dump truck in dirt. I'm telling you, whatever you tell Tasha to put in that truck, she was putting it. I didn't care. You was in the way, you didn't run over. I'm telling you right now. And when I, the first morning I picked Tasha up, I called Tasha, I said, Tasha, be ready at five. When I got there at five o'clock, Tasha was standing at the road in the dark, <laughs> ready to go to work, a book sack, a big old cup of ice, in spandex. <laughs> I said, Tasha, where you going with those spandex on today? She said, man, when you drive them trucks, you gotta be prepared to use the bathroom anyway. And those spandex is the fastest you can get out of. But I'm telling you, man, Tasha, that was a driver, man. I'm telling you. The first day, usually when I put people in there and I hire people, I will put them with somebody who know the ropes or whatever for like two weeks. So I'll let them drive, ride with somebody for a week and drive the next week with somebody. Tasha, Three days, Tasha was ready to get in her truck by herself. So on the way home, I said, Tasha, you ready for me to think you can handle that truck? I said, boy, I drive a big truck. I got a class A. I'm not a back that thing. <laughs> so on the third day, I said, Tasha, on the way to work, I said, Tasha, you sure you're ready to get in the truck by yourself? She said, boy, I'm ready. So, you know, when we got to the work, I put her in her truck. Everybody in a line, they usually stick together when they're running together because we only got five trucks now. We got three females and two males. Man, when I tell y'all, Tasha brought joy to the people. She brought love and laughter. We would spend 30 minutes to an hour every day when we get off, man, just laughing. Just laughing. So um, one of the guys, one of the older guys that worked with us, he called me. If Tasha missed a thing, he wasn't right. He said, hey, what cookie at? I said, who is cookie? <laughs> you know the new girl, the one making the red red at? <laughs> oh, you talk to Tasha. Oh, I ain't know her name. I said, why you call her cookie? He said, because she looked like a sweet cookie. <laughs> Man, listen, we had a good time with Tasha. And the first female that I put her with, she came all the way from St. George to show her love. So back to stand and let everybody see you. That was, that was the one that she rolled with. We had other people coming, but I guess they hard to take because like I said, Tasha was the third oldest and everybody else young and we had two older guys. But man, I'm telling y'all, the company is hurt right now. We just like really hurt. Like Tasha would go to the jobs. Them boys, you know everybody after Tasha, they see that red head, they want to know who's out there, who that is with that red head? 
I said, man, I'm telling y'all, that Terrence Middleton's sister, y'all better back up because he don't play. And they know Tasha Terrence, because Terrence will fuck the bricks in a minute, get up, and stand up, put his hand like this. <laughs> he didn't play. So when I start telling Terrence that was Terrence's sister, we ain't had no more problems, but we're going to miss Tasha, man. It's sad. I went to work Monday. All the trucks were going off the yard, except Tasha. And man, it was rough. It was rough all week, man. Until this day, man, we're going to miss Tasha. I want y'all to know, um, we get one more thing before I leave. Dominique, you better make sure you get Tasha cop fix, bro. Cause she said she's gonna slap me when she get her cop fix on this past few lessons. <laughs> Albertino, your mom's gonna be working for you, man. She was gonna get you a truck, bro. I'm telling you what she told me. She was gonna get you a truck, bro. So you keep going, man, and do what you got to do to get that truck to make your mom happy. I thank y'all, man.
Good afternoon. If I had to say it again, Latasha, I would need more, definitely more than three minutes. But we all know Tasha was a loving, caring person. Wherever she seen you, she would make a smile, make you smile. I've never known Tasha to, for anything, besides caring for people and to make them smile, laugh, or anything. So on behalf of the Andrews High School class of 96, I have a poem that I would like to read. Still missing you. They say there is a reason. They say that time will heal. But neither time nor reason will change the way we feel. For no one knows the heartache that lies behind our smile. No one knows how many times we have broken down and cried. We want to tell you something so there won't be any doubt. You're so wonderful to think of, but so hard to be without. We cannot bring the old days back when we were all together. But the memories we made in school will be in our hearts forever. Tasha, we love you, baby. Take care. Praise the Lord to everyone on behalf of the bereaving families who have a few cards and a couple of poems to be read. It's so hard to lose someone you love, especially when it happens so unexpectedly. Always remember that you have the love and concern of family and friends. So many people care about you and are keeping you in their thoughts and hearts. We are praying for you and your entire family. Love always, love in prayers, classmates of 1971. Because you care and understand and love you more than you can imagine. Don't worry because I am with you. Don't be afraid because I am your God. I will make you strong and will help you. I will support you with my right hand that saves you, Isaiah 41 and 10. I am asking him to hold on to you extra tight as he helps you through this. Praying for you, love you, 96, care of 96. Keeping you close in caring thoughts and prayers. Though your heart must hold deep sadness 
and the loss of the one you love, may it also hold the blessings of the life you share and the love that will always be a part of you. Pray that God will comfort you, uplift your spirit, and carry you through the time, this time of sadness, to a place of peace. With deepest sympathy, love Bishop and Mother John Smith Jr. and the Greater Bible Way Church of Georgetown's church family. The Lord is close to all who call on him, Psalm 145 and 18. As you walk through this time of loss, may you know that the Lord walks with you and he will comfort you from Brian Burroughs and family. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted, Matthew 5 and 4. May God's loving presence comfort you, his perfect peace restore you, and his promise of eternal life sustain you during this time of loss. In sympathy and love, praying for you and the family, love Carol Williams and family. Until we meet again, we think about you always. We talk about you still. You have never been forgotten and you never will. We hold you close within our hearts and there you will remain to walk and guide us through our lives until we meet again. With heartfelt sympathy, the Andrews High School class of 2017 sends our heartfelt condolences during your time of bereavement. Please know that we are thinking of you and our prayers are with you and the family during this difficult time. If you need us, please do not hesitate to call us, the class of 2017. Wow, what can I say? I'm devastated, heartbroken, and imperiled. You were my only niece. I'm going to miss you and all through the night because we had different time zones. You say I fuss all the time, but I did because I wanted the best for y'all. I'm going to miss the daily pictures of you, and you always told me what you wanted to eat because you loved my cooking. I'm going to miss everything about you. Fly night, my beautiful angel. Love, Auntie Marsha. Oh, my baby, I know that. You are in a better place, as people would say. I know you would not want to be in a sad way, but this one got me. I'll miss your calls and you going shopping and buying me cut up jeans and big leg pants. I kept them in the closet, but for you, my baby, I'll wear them now. You know I pleaded for you and your baby's life, but it wasn't to be. I'll think of the good times, which was many. Never a dull moment with you, so go ahead and rest in Jesus' arms. Love you forever and always, Mom. To my loving wife in heaven, our time together was special. So were the memories we made. And although you live in heaven now, those memories never fade. I bow my head in silence and remember my wife with love. And I know that you are up there watching from above. Every day is a struggle and nothing feels the same. And my heart breaks a little more every time I hear your name. You'll always be remembered, and time may heal my heart, but a piece of me is missing since the day we had to part. In heaven is for angels, then I know that 
where you, where that's where you'll be. And I know you will be waiting when heaven calls for me, your husband, till me. On behalf of the bereaving families, they would like to give a special thanks to Chetta Scott, Deborah Gillen, and Mary Ann Myers, the Bottleway Church family, and Ebenezer Church family for all you have done. We love you all and thank you from the bottom of our hearts. And at this time, you may read the obituary in silence. As you continue reading your obituary, just for a few moments, reflection of all we hear. We thank God for divine memories of those who pass. services thus far. Uh, will you put your hand together and give God a praise? <laughs> oh, come on. I believe that the word is in the building. The Bible says, men shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. I don't know about you, but God's word will comfort you in times such as this. How many of you believe there's a word in the house for you today? I'm glory to God. Ah, come on, you're to lift that hand and say, Lord, I need a word from you that will strengthen me in such a time as this. But we do honor the Lord today. We thank God for this great man of God who's going to come and deliver a word of comfort unto us today. And I don't know about you, but I love a God that will comfort me when my heart is broken and tears running down my cheek. The writer said, there's not a friend like the lonely Jesus. Somebody ought to declare, no, not one. 
How many of you got a friend in Jesus? Or oh, come on, there'll be some witnesses out there. Do you really have a friend in Jesus? We thank God at this particular time, uh, Divine Harvard is going to come back and render a selection. And the next voice you'll hear after that will be the set man of this house, Bishop John Smith Jr., who's going to come with words of comfort. But as divine harmony come forth today, put your hand together. Give God a praise in this place. Glory to God.
the God of Ebenezer, the God of Bible way. We come to you now. God, we humble ourselves. We're not ashamed to say we need you. We're not ashamed to say we can't make it without you. Help us, God. We are struggling. We don't understand your ways, so we struggle, God. But give us peace in our heart, in our mind, and in our soul. The world is an evil place. Evil is all around us. Cover us with your blood. As we sanctify ourselves, you sanctify us wholly. Bless us as only you can. Help us to decrease that you might increase. Give us a word today. We heard from the newspaper, from the TV, from our phone. But God, it's been a long time since some of us heard from you. Speak to us now. We need a word from home. Bless us as only you can. Bless our president. Bless our, all of our representatives. Mayors, governor. Give them wisdom. Knowledge and understanding to lead such a great people. We bless you now. Give us a ream of word. Do it for your glory and for your honor. In Jesus' name. The book of St. John chapter number 10. A wonderful scripture. I'm just going to read a few verses. The thief comes not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus said, I am come that you might have life. And not just light, but more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. And the good shepherd giveth his life for his sheep. Thank God for his word. This book of John, written by the apostle shows us that Jesus is the eternal God that took on flesh to die for the sins of the world. John wrote about it. And here in our 10th chapter is a wonderful chapter. Jesus starts off with a parent Amen. I can't preach to them. They can't hear me. But I can preach to you. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. Amen. Of the sheep. The saints or the people of God are considered sheep. And you know sheep was a dumb man. Did y'all know that? Yeah, they need a shepherd. They need somebody to lead them. Too many of us are just hanging out in the world. And we don't think we need a shepherd. We think we are big enough and bad enough to do anything we want to do. But you go ahead, you're going to suffer with some consequences. 
above what you have done. So Jesus said, now y'all excuse me preacher, excuse me Reverend Gamble. He said, we got some preachers that are terrible sheep. Lord have mercy. They love money rather than the sheep. Just got to church and act for a raise. Do some work for it. Oh, yeah, y'all sorry, y'all came. Jesus said they were thieves. They robbed the people there hurtly. And if the wolf come, they'll take off and leave the sheep. Because they have no relationship with God and with the people. Now, I like Jesus. Jesus said, I know my sheep. Amen. If you have a church and don't know your member name, you're terrible. <laughs> Jesus said, I know my sheep. And another boy. They will not follow. I just have to make my noise and they'll come and follow me. Jesus said, I am the door to the sheepfold in this parable. If you come in to me, you can enter in and go out and find pastor. In other words, I'll take care of I do everything you need me to do. So he was talking to the Pharisees who were over Israel and the people of God. But they didn't care too much about the people. They just want to dress sharp. Amen. Drive a new carriage. Amen. I had an old doctor. I've been preaching 50 something years. And a preacher told me, that's not a preacher car. I said, well, I'm a preacher, that's my car. <laughs> he thought I needed a Cadillac. But my Cadillac is Jesus. <laughs> the Lily of the Valley. The brightest morning star. I'm not known for my car. I'm known for my character. <laughs> Can I preach a little? I both said here, hey amen, that they didn't understand what Jesus was talking about. So Jesus said to them again, verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door to the sheepfold. In other words, you can't get to heaven unless you come to me. Oh, y'all don't hear me here. You can't join the church and go to heaven. You can't give the preacher your hand and go to heaven. You got to have a relationship. with Jesus. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the light. No man can get to my father unless you come through me. Listen to what Jesus said. All that come before me are thieves and robbers. But the real sheep don't hear that. Amen. Who are you listening to? Amen. Who, is, who got your ear? Who is talking to you to tell you that you are all right when your life is in a mess? Who that is talking to you when you shoot up and get high and act crazy? I don't know who is talking to you. But I got news for you today. Amen. 
there's a devil out there. Look at somebody say, there's a devil out there. He is the prince and the power of the air. And he'll mess with your mind. He'll mess with your heart. He'll mess with your soul. He'll mess with your body. Because he's already destined for hell himself. So we're in a fight. Uh, ladies, we're in a fight. And we're going to fight. Uh, I am the door to the sheepfold. By me, if any man in love, he shall be saved. Now, you ask for, are you saved? They tell you which church they go to. I ask you your affiliation. I ask you, do you know Jesus? Amen. Uh, your denomination don't, don't threaten me if you don't know the Jesus. That says, upon this rock, I'll build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I, I feel like preaching. My Lord said, the thief, he called the devil a thief. In other words, some of us have let the devil rob us of stuff. He's a thief. He's robbing us of our dignity. He's robbing us of our manhood and womanhood. Tell today we don't know which hood we are. I feel like we The thief. Look at him, what's in the thief? He's out to rob you. He's out, amen, to from you. But thank God uh, Jesus can restore what the canker worm eat. And what the other side to steal from you. You're in the right place now. God can restore what the devil stole from you. Bible said not only does he want to kill but he want to destroy. Look at somebody say, there's an enemy that's out to destroy you. Amen? Time to trip you up. Time to mess up your life. Amen? He's the thief. He's the robber. He wants to destroy our young people with dope, with all kind of other devices. And then he wants to destroy their mind. But the devil is alive. He rebuked that spirit today. Can't you see it? Some of us look older than we are because the thief has steal our youth. Oh, y'all don't hear me. You think you party? having a good time, but the thief is robbing me. He wants to kill you. Now, y'all got to come back another Sunday, because I can't preach it like I want it today. Some of y'all might give God the finger. You know them folks who give God the finger? You better watch giving God the finger. But uh, the devil is out to destroy. You know, we don't hear a lot of talk about demons today. People don't believe that there's, there's demons. Some of our sons and daughters are possessed. They don't have control over their life. Another spirit has control over them. That when you can curse the woman that birthed you, you got the wrong spirit. When you can curse the man that put food on the table, you got the wrong spirit. Y'all in the right.
right church? Am I all right, Miss Lynette? Yeah, I heard the Lord, I don't care if you said no, the Lord said, go ahead. Talk to her. See, a lot of us don't get a lot of talking to. We get people pat us on the back when we're wrong and don't try to straighten us out. of sin is that well thank God for the gift of God thank God for the gift of God it's eternal we have an enemy my wife went on vacation and I was living in New York and I started praying I heard full crack. My God. Amen. The walls were acting up. Because I was in the house by myself. Well, you'll never hear that. Well, you pray by yourself. You'll hear stuff you never heard. So I, I got some sense. The Bible said, watch as well as pray. So I kept praying for the open one out. I ain't going to let nothing sneak up on me. So the Bible said here, Amen, Jesus tell that there's destruction out there for those who do not know God. You know, some of us, oh, there's so much crime. There's so much evil in the world. Well, come to church. I ain't hear none of y'all divorce in the world. No. I don't care how evil it is, you still want to hang out. Y'all don't hear me here. On your job Friday evening, you want to know where is the problem? Where can I go and let my head down? Where can I go and do my thing? Where can I go and do my thing? Where can I go to put my outfit on? Let me tell you, you keep on going. I ain't gonna tell you where you're going. All right. Jesus said, I'm gonna put it in I know you're already tired. But I am coming. Everybody say, but there's a thief out there. But God said, why 
Are you doing this? I was going to college four nights a week all day Saturday. Had a full-time job. I was going to be this great designer. I was going to make women look beautiful. But thank God, God had another plan. I don't want you to dress them up in clothes. I want you to dress them in my righteousness, in my godliness. I want you to tell somebody cry out. I want to be saved. to my topic. Aren't you looking for a better life? See, some of you are looking for a better man. But life is not in the man. Some of you are looking for a better woman. But life in it. Abundant life is in Jesus the Christ, the Son of the living.
is looking for people who want a better life. Aren't you tired of scrambling? Aren't you tired? You ought to look in the mirror at yourself and say, I'm sick of you. You keep messing me up. I make a lot of money and you drink it all. I'm sick. I'm sick of you. In my flesh. Some of y'all can't see it. Because you think your God answered the prayer. Amen. When I was doing fashion, it was 36, 22, 36. It was a Pepsi-Cola. Some of y'all, the cola done run out. I better leave that alone. I, I love you all. I don't, I don't want to offend anybody. But look at yourself and say, I don't look like I used to look. You know, folk get on me and say, you got some false teeth. I said, I paid for those. <laughs> What's your excuse? You better get you something to chew with. Don't excuse me, I'm just having fun up here. But I want to get it in the mind. Don't let the devil steal your life. And you wake up one morning and you 50 and your whole life is messed up. Now you want to change. But God want to give you life. He said, cast all your care upon me. Amen. Give it all to me. I'll take care of you. You don't need a man. Some of y'all want a BMW. Anybody want a BMW? None of you ladies want a BMW? Raise your hand. BMW is a black man working. See, that's why y'all mess up. Y'all selling for the man who ain't got no job. How can he take care? should be full tomorrow morning. My way should be full of folk that say, I want a better I'm tired of struggling when I should be blessed. Amen. I'm tired of scratching off and never win. Uh oh Oh, you all scratch off. <laughs> Can you hear what they say? Scratch. Oh. Scratch your money. Oh, oh y'all didn't get that. <laughs> we want to get rich so we can have a better life. God told me to tell you what you see. I want to give it to you freely. Come 
without money. Come without pride. I want to give you salvation. You can't buy it. You can't pray it up. You got to accept it because it's a gift from God. Oh, I, I better quit. Yeah, I'm about 25 minutes. Imagine, I want to give you life. These young people here, if they could talk today, they'll be getting new life. Life is too short. Get a new life. Get your head on straight. Get your heart sick. Get your mind regulated. And get a better life. And stop looking for folk to bail you out. God said, come unto me, all ye that labor in a heavy labor, I'll give you right. You in every food line that all over the county trying to get something to eat. But you never get fear because you're missing your spiritual food. That's why I come to church so I can be fed. Because Jesus said, if you hunger and thirst after righteousness, you shall be. I'll feed you. I'll be your bread when you're hungry. I'll be an open door for you when you need a way out. I'll be your God and you'll be mine. Are you looking for a new life? Any man in Christ Jesus is a new creature or creation all things are passed away. Do you know something? I was dirty. I didn't think God would accept me. But God said, if you come to me, I'll no wise cast you off. Your friend might push you away. Other folk might look down on you. But God said, if you come to me, I'll accept you right where you are. But then get ready for a change. So you can have new life. Is there somebody here today said, I want more than this? A hundred dollar hairdo. I want more than a weed. God told me to tell you, he knows how many hair on your head. And he count the weed when you're born. We want pretty bodies, but we got evil hearts. But God want to change you from the inside out. I know you need help. The way you dress, cry out for help. The way you curse for out, cry out for help. The way you treat your neighbor, cry out for him. The way you cuss on the job, cry out for him. Somebody don't say help, God. Now, some of y'all ain't gonna do this. Look down and say, I'm a mess. But God specializes in taking messes. If God can take the dust of the ground and make Adam, he can take your man and make you a new creature in Christ Jesus. You don't have to worry to come to God. Well, I had three husbands to read it and had none. They had you. Now, oh, let me move on. 
But God said, if you come to me, I will forgive you of every one of your sins. I will cleanse you of every one of your iniquities. I'll wash you in my own blood, sanctify you, and make you holy. I'm a quick, but remember this, I'll get my feelings good, get a good look, because you're going to go to the judgment seat, and you're going to say, Lord, I didn't know. Lord, so did you see that tall, tall, handsome black man? <laughs> with gray hair at that funeral who offered you a better life now it's too late today you hear my voice don't get mad God ain't telling nobody your business God is reaching out listen God knows every thought you have Every place you bring, every secret sin you commit, God already knows. So you ain't telling him what he don't know. He just wants you to confess it and forsake it so he can forgive it. Ah, that's enough. Want a new I'm tired. I, I was born in McClendonville, South Santee. And at 17 years old, I left because I wanted a new life. I went searching. I said, there got to be more than this, than dirt road. And guess what? My first plane ride, I ended up in Chicago. And I said, look how these people living. I was walking around looking at the, I said, how these gas building hold up and ain't got no. <laughs> See, travel broadens your mind. You can think you in heaven where you are, but I dare you to travel. You'll see that there's a better life out there than the life you were born with. But every man and woman must decide for themselves. I want a better life. And you have to walk away from the crowd who is going to Broadway and turn with the crowd that's going to Nairobi. Because I want a better life. I feel the unction of the Holy Spirit right now. God is telling me somebody want to stand up right now and say, I want a better life. I want a better life. Are you happy with the one you got? Amen. You're crying the wee hours of the night because you're unhappy. Don't you want a better life? I'm offering it to you. Just have the courage to stand and say, Lord, I need you to change my life. Because if I keep going the way I'm headed, my soul is going to be lost. Who will, stand? Who will have the courage? I'm standing. I'm already saved, but I still want a better life. I see so many people I want to help so I need God to help me so I can reach out and help some of my sisters and brothers. Anybody want a better life? Anybody want a better life? You're going to hear these words again. Anybody, I see you. Anybody want a better life? Oh, come on. Don't look around at other folk. This is to you, to you want a better life? Do you want to really live? God is here today. Come on, we're going to pray. Somebody else ought to stand. Say, here I am, God. I need you. I need your help. I need your praise. I need your mercy. I want a better life.
but you in Paris. Listen, how come we are not in Paris when we sing, but we in Paris till somebody finds out? Come on, somebody. You can shut my mouth, just stand up. Because there's somebody over here, over here, I see you, that need to stand and say, Lord, give me a better life. Come on, come on. We're not going to prolong it. Everybody who is saved, don't know Jesus as Lord, stand up right now. You can know him today. You can leave here a changed person if you give your heart to Jesus. Not to that man, not to that woman. Give your heart to God. He'll never hurt you. He'll never broke your heart. Is there somebody else here? Well, Jesus said, I am the door to the sheepfold. So guess what? Because nobody else stands, I'm going to close the door. On just those who stand. Have you all say, help me to pray for these who stand that they'll get the better life that God has to offer. Close your eyes with me, Father, in the magnificent name of Jesus, the God that saved, the God that healed, the God that keep us, the God that cover us with your blood, the God that died, that we might have a right to the tree of life. Touch those that are standing today. Give them further instruction how to receive a better life. Do it in the funeral. Do it for your glory. Do it for your honor. Stir hearts and minds. Even those who didn't stand. God, I pray that you touch their heart. That they'll find you and hold on to you and tell you bless them with a better life. God, we love you. We thank you. We praise you. We glorify you. Everybody say in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name.